What's up guys? I did film an entire video for Tanjiro Sun Breathing Technique, so it's kind of long, like 15-16 minutes, so I do suggest you guys get a snack, change into some comfortable clothes, and let's get into it. So first things first, I'm using TXT Fon's um, brushes. They are the 9mm and the 5mm. Really, really love this 9mm. Super duper good for lining. The 5mm, love it for filling in larger areas. Um, especially for shading and filling in eyes. Super good. And right here, I'm just mixing on my palette. I'm mixing Mysterious Nude with grayish lavender to give Tanjiro that low light type of look on his face. Also, never mix your paint with your brushes because you could like flare out the bristles and sometimes they won't go back. Sometimes, but you can make it work. Try to use like a silicone mixing tool or like a spatula or something. Alright, now I'm going in with his general eye shape. This doesn't have to be perfect because you can perfect it with his eyebrows, eyelids, and eyelashes when it comes down to that part. It doesn't have to be perfect. You guys, I mess up so many times on this. Like, the sizing of his face is not even perfect. I had to go in and add more, as you'll see further on in the video. It's not perfect. So, with his eyes... I use grayish lavender with a little mixed in with a little white, which is matte white by Vetro. And for his highlight, I use ice blue mixed in with white to give it a highlighted type of look. Now I'm mixing in Jewel Umber with his uh, skin tone color I mixed earlier to do some shading. For some reason, I lost the footage of me outlining his eyes, but as you can see, it's a general shape. I just keep looking back and forth at my picture. You can see me stopping here and looking, making sure I'm doing the right shape for the shading part. And I'm going to add shading right above his eyelash because we're going to put the eyebrow right on top of that. It's going to look super clean and crispy. Of course, I'm adding shading underneath the eyes. You know, just gauge back and forth with your picture. You don't have to add all the exact shadings that are on, that's on like your reference photo, but it does help it stand out more. So, it's up to you. And for cleanup, I'm using a really, really flat oval brush. This is like a size 6. I can really, like, squeegee it in there and, like, make a straight line with it. I use it all the time for cleanup. So my favorite part of doing Tanjiro is doing his eyebrows and eyes. They're just so profound and it shows so much emotion with his eyebrows and eyes. I just love it. We gotta give it up for our Cancer King, Tanjiro Kamado. So normally I would like his eyebrows a little more skinnier than this, but I was trying to film and I got tired of you know, kept going back and erasing because my phone was like, tr like damn near in my face. So I got tired of going back and erasing. So, you know, his eyebrows are much skinnier on my first time doing him than it is this time. So I did these like two, two and a half years ago, but I just refilmed it for, you know, video purposes. A lot of people wanted to see how I you know, did the process, how I did the color grading, and how I did the fire, so, regular black, 
I will never in my life use Vetro Boss Black for filling in because it won't cure. That black is so pigmented, it won't cure in the light. It's just so, super duper pigmented. And you can really just play around with his eyebrows until it gets to your liking. And now I am filling in his eyelid lines with Vetro Boss Black. I don't know, you don't have to switch back and forth, but I just prefer Vetro Boss Black. It's just like my all-time finisher. Now I'm going in with his nose, and right here you can probably see me gauging and realizing that his nose is way too big for his face. And I'm going to have to go in and add more face or surface area for his face now that was a tongue twister but I'm gonna have to go in and add more to his face because it's just unproportionate right here if you just look where his nose is it's way too big of course I'm gonna add a pop of shading in there Now I'm filling in his mouth, I have diluted the grayish lavender by Vetro with some white and the main thing in this reference photo is that his eyes and his mouth are not white. Honestly, you can zoom in and you can look really, really closely. They're not white, they are like a really, really light lavender purple color shade. Like, as you can see here, really, really good. The unproportionate mouth. There's not enough room for it to look correct. So I'm going to add in more down there. And for his eyes, I'm using Vetro Electric Pink. This is my favorite part, you guys. My absolute favorite part is his eyes. So this is how I execute his hexagon, or just a pentagon-shaped eyes. Um... I first put down that pink because if you don't put the pink down first, it won't show up over the top of this black. You can forget about it. It'll be a waste. So I do suggest you put your light color down first and then outline it with your black or whatever color the person's eye shape is. Um, and I do that trick for like most of my anime pictures that I'm drawing is I put the lightest color that, that's in their eyes and I do that. I'm going to highlight the side of his face with a lighter skin tone. So I just used his original skin tone, skin tone mix that I made earlier. And I added a little bit of white. Look at this beautiful green. This is for his um, jacket. His green and black checker jacket. Which is barely in frame. So it's no big deal if you don't add it in there. And for his scar, I just added some more jewel umber to give it a dark shaded tint. And again, I just use his regular skin tone mix that I use. You can see here I made his forehead a little bit bigger because I, I didn't gauge it right. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can fix along the way. And we can troubleshoot. So if things aren't looking too good, don't worry. You can troubleshoot and fix it towards the end. I'm using Vetro number 22. This is just a regular black. And I am making the little outlines for his hair. And the little spaces that you see behind. You're going to add that burgundy deep red in there. And the perfect color for that is Vetro warm red gonna add a little dot for his pupils love 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 this brush super super good it stays nice and stiff sometimes and it, and it can also like 
manipulate it to being flexible. Super duper good. You'll see here when I start doing the flames. Now for the flames, uh, you're going to have to outline what you want to be in flames with white first. Then you're going to go in with your colors on top of that. So this is Vetro Matte White and I made a little outline for where I want the fire to go and yeah you can see right here I'm going to line up the other nails just to make sure that I'm still on track and it spans across both pretty evenly. He's starting to look good. I kind of messed up on his ears but I'll, I'm going to fix that in the end. Like I said I'm not perfect you guys. Don't stress. Everything can be fixed. And I really take my time here because sometimes these lines can get a little bit confusing. If you're sitting here painting all day, I'm going to fill it in. Then I'm going to take the like the best trio colors to execute this flame. For the flames, the colors that I'm going to use are also from Vetro. I have the code. I'm going to list all the items that I use at the end with my code, um, my best friend's code, the link to her brushes, all that stuff, the link to the website where you can purchase all these items if you want. There's no pressure, but I'm going to link it, you know, just to make it a little bit easier for you guys. So the colors that we're going to use for the flames, we're going to use Vetro Matte White, which we already put our base down. And then we're going to use, look at this, it looks so good, right? Then we're going to use Vetro Yuma Yellow, Electric Red, and Electric Orange. So, one thing I noticed when I'm looking at the reference picture, you guys got to zoom in just so you can make sure you're color grading these pictures correctly. It's not white on the inside of the flame. It looks a little yellow to me. In my eyes, it looks yellow. So I put that Yuma yellow in the middle. And then you're going to outline the Yuma yellow with the electric orange. And towards the border, you're going to add in a little bit of electric red. It's going to make it pop. Like you can see here, I don't know why when I was filming this, the lights kind of flushed out the look. It's not as vibrant, unfortunately, but you'll see when I line it up, it'll look just perfectly fine. Look at the glow in the lamp. After you put all your fire colors down, you're going to outline the flames and make them look really, really flowy and like hot lava type vibe that's what we're going for you're going to have some thick and some super thin outlines here they don't have to be perfect some are some are minuscule super duper thin and some are kind of thick because this is what it looks like on the reference picture it's going to make it pop i'm not even kidding you got to stick with it and trust the process it's going to look great you want thick and thin lines. And also, don't think too hard on these flames. Wherever your hand takes you, let the flames flow that way. They look better when they're not so uniform, you know? And I'm outlining with the TXT Fine 9mm. And these are the matte top coats that I recommend. Super duper good. They are from Nail Labo. And can't recommend them enough. As we approach the finish line, we're going to apply the, the Presto Mat only on Tanjiro and the flames. You don't have to do this step, but if you want it all to be shiny, go ahead, top coat everything in shiny. If not, I like to do the matte because it gives you type of like some kind of like contrast between. I love the look of the matte versus shiny, and I think they turned out really, really good.
And of course, we're going to clean off that inhibition layer with some alcohol and a wipe. And look at that reveal. He looks so good. Super duper crisp and clean. And you can see that mag powder underneath just glow. It looks so good. I hope you guys learned something from this. And I hope it helped you guys. If you ever wondered how I executed this, these awesome press-on nails. If you want your own, go ahead and start an order form at PamperedNailGallery.com. If you guys want to purchase the items that I use... They are from Vetro US. The US site is up and running. And I have codes TXTFON10 to save and code SAM10 to save on Vetro, all things Vetro. And look at that, you guys did it. If you if you want to paint along and tag me on Instagram or TikTok or even YouTube, I would be honored to look and you know cheer you guys on if you need any help. You know, reach out. This is Super fun for me to help you guys if I can. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all later. Peace. Let me know if you want more content like this. I'll make long form videos if you do. If not, it's cool. See y'all later.